who don't know me or just can't even recognize me under my hat, uh, when I'm not joining you on the ticket line, I'm chair of the geography department. And in that capacity, I'm very, very pleased and proud to welcome our guest today, uh, Dr. Neil Smith, who I'm just going to describe as a geographer extraordinaire. Uh, whether you're in geography or another discipline, if you haven't read him, Jesus Christ, go read him. Uh, he is also a veteran of many picket lines, and he is in fact here today to uh, uh, share his experience and observations from his time recently this past fall in Barcelona uh, with regard to a student strike. But before uh, he begins to speak, I just want you to know that the reason he's here really is his better half, uh, Deb Cowan, who is a prof in geography at U of T. Deb and Neil together, you know, wanted to make some kind of a contribution to you guys to really show their support. So they're here, you know, to, to share this, but it, it comes from this broader support that you should really know about. They represent, you've got a lot of support out there beyond the university. So without further ado, uh, after Neil's talk, I think as you know, there's going to be food and singing and and what have you, but anyway, without further ado, Dr. Neil Smith. Well, thanks very much, and I'll see you again in a minute. <laughs> Well, let me just say, uh, I just returned from Barcelona on Saturday and there's a strike at the University of Barcelona uh, that's around some of the very same issues that the strike is around here. Um, in Barcelona, uh, there's a call in Catalan, which I'm not qualified to give, but the Spanish version of it is Si a la huelga, yes to the strike. So I think in solidarity with them to begin with, we should start by just chanting yes to the strike. Yes to the strike, here at York, there in Barcelona. Yes to the strike, si a la huelga, si a la huelga. Yes to the strike. Um, the strike in Barcelona is around an issue that's called the, ba the Bologna process. The Bologna process is a European-wide uh, movement created by the uh, European Union to attempt to privatize the universities throughout Europe. Some of the universities in Europe are thoroughly privatized already. Uh, the British University is probably leading the pack uh, where I cut my teeth. But in Spain, the public universities are still very uh, open for working class people to go to school. Uh, and in that sense, the University of Barcelona really has a connection to what's going on here in York. The issues will be very familiar to you in Barcelona. They're about privatizing the university, raising fees for students, commercializing uh, the output, as the language goes, of what happens within the university, rendering the universities into neoliberal spaces of education which of course is exactly what on the broad basis we're fighting against. Uh, that's what the Bologna process promises to bring and that's what students in Barcelona have fought against. It's not just students in Barcelona. The struggle, although it started in Barcelona, which has always been this working class centre of revolt within Spain, Catalonia, um, it's spread to Madrid, uh, Salamanca, Sevilla, uh, Villahermosa and a number of other cities in, in, in um, Spain and students have come out on strike and are threatened to continue the strike over a long period. They've gathered strength also from faculty members and it's great to see some faculty members here um, but also from high school students as well. So it's been this wonderful strike uh, that's, that's really uh, uh, galvanized an anti-neoliberal push right at a moment when probably we could argue it's more important than ever that that kind of push happens. Have to move. It's illegal for you to stand in the middle of the street without legs over here. 
Unless you're you. You're alive. Except for you. Now, um, before I go further about Barcelona and try and broaden this out, I just want to give you some breaking news I just heard, um, thanks to Deborah Cowan, actually. Um, the students at U of T have voted to allow a strike at U of T. They deserve a lot of support as well. And I know there have been U of T people have come up here too. So um, the point is this is building. And it's building not just within academia, although of course that's very important. Yeah. Uh, it's building outside. All of you know that there's a strike on right now in Ottawa by transport workers who've effectively shut down large parts of the city in Ottawa. Why is all this happening now? You know, there are other things that are going on as well. It's not just Ottawa. In Chicago, 250 workers who work for a window and a door company who were summarily laid off by uh, an employer who refused to give them severance pay, refused to pay wages that were due, Shame. refused to allow them into the plant in the first place. They were laid off. They just did what they thought they had to do. What did they do? They took over the factory. What you guys are doing, you're taking over the factory. In Chicago, the window, the, 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 the factory made windows and it made doors. Um, I've, in the past, referred to universities as sausage factories. We make sausages, human sausages. <laughs> we take the knowledge that you already know before you come into university and we grind it into pulp. <laughs> we stick it in a bag of stuff that you don't even want to know what the bag's made of. And we stick you out the door as a sausage, right? This is a sausage factory. The question becomes, who rules the sausage factory? Right? And that's the question I think that you're all challenging too and that you're you know, really doing a tremendous job challenging by being in this picket line. Um, but it's true, it's a sausage factory and we have to see it that way. Uh, we have everything to do with what's going on in Chicago and what's going on with transport workers in Ottawa. Yay! Thank you for supporting the strike. <laughs> um, we have every connection with them and I think the connections are uh, increasingly clear right now with the economic crisis that's coming down. And it's not just Barcelona students and it's not just Chicago workers. But when we come back, let's think about Greece as well. It's still, we would all like to stand there and listen, wouldn't we? So what, look at what's happening in Greece right now. A revolt by mostly students when the police shot and killed a 15-year-old. Extraordinary that that would happen in Greece. In New York, where I actually work, um, we went through this in the 1990s. It's not as bad now, but we went through it. It happens here too in Toronto, as many of you uh, also know. It happens in Vancouver, in the airport, with tasers. Um, so it's not something that's separate from the lives we live here. And it's not something that's separate from uh, the strike and from the issues at York or the issues in Barcelona. Why? Because one of the approaches right now to dealing with demands of people who are being forced to pay for the economic crisis, one of the responses is repression. And that repression comes first and foremost through the police, through the military, uh, through the National Guard if you're in the United States. Um, that's one of the ways in which um, the response to crisis happens. The, rep the repressive mechanisms uh, for events like this have already been set up uh, in a neoliberal world. That's not the only way to go. So in Greece, the struggle by students that's been going on now for three or four days has melded into a general strike which started this morning uh, and there have been uh, various attacks by police on the general strike